Hello, welcome back to Nexus Core for another deck profile. Today we're doing blasters because blasters are meta and we're all about meta here at Nexus Core. So uh, yeah, let's just uh, jump right on into it. Our starter for our deck is uh, the ever-living Wingo Brave. When this thing boosts and uh, hits during the battle that it boosts a unit with blaster in its name, you move this to soul and search for your deck for another card with blaster in its name. And that's just any card with blaster. And there's some cards in this deck that have blaster in this name that aren't blaster blade. Hence why it's the blaster deck. This thing also is guaranteed to live because most you have some grade ones with blasters. So when you first attack and you boost with the blast, you just move to soul. Search for a grade two or three that you need to ride for the turn. This thing fixes your grade lock. It's what makes the deck super consistent and top all the time, I would say. It just adds to the deck being amazing. Run Wingle Brave. Next up, four copies of Blaster Blade Exceed. So uh, what this thing does is uh, you write it. You don't write anything else in this deck because uh, Wingle Brave uh, gives it to you, basically. Um, you uh, When this is written or called, you counter plus one and you can kill something that's grade one or greater on the field. So why not? I love retiring and non-retired based decks. His other skill is when you stride, if the unit, the G unit, has Saver in its name, you search your deck for a card with Blaster Blade in its name and add to hand, like itself, so you can stride the next turn. Consistency is great! Speaking of cards with Blaster in their name, we got a new Lou, and he has Blaster in its name. What he does is when he's placed on rear, you, uh, can uh, choose a card with Blaster Blade in its name from your drop zone, and you uh, put it in the bottom of your deck, and he gets 5k. That's really great, and because he's 16k beer, and also he has Intercept, and he gets 5k shield. So he's basically like a grade 2, in a sense, but he's a grade 3, so that's nice. So let's move on to our grade 2s. We got the star of the deck. We've got four copies of Blaster Blade. So uh, what Blaster Blade does is uh, he retires stuff. Yeah, I, I love retiring and not retire base decks. Uh, when he's placed on rear, you counter blast two and you can kill a grade two or greater. When he's placed on van, you counter blast two and retire anything you want. Uh, you don't typically use him for the skill. You use him because a lot of cards require his name to do a lot of stuff. So you need four copies of him in the deck. Look at that nice boxless text foiling it's great i love it next for blaster blades we've got two copies of blaster blade spirit now uh this card doesn't get abilities off of bark goal and vlogel but uh this card is a 10k base so when you ride it you're at a 10k base and you stop rush and it's great and he's a target for alfred and lou grade two lou even grade three lou he's, he's a target for lou it's great. He uh, when he's called from deck, uh, you can counterblast uh, one to kill your opponent's grade two or greater. And uh, when he's attacked, it doesn't matter what he's attacked by. This thing dies. Like he's a ghost. Get it? He's a spirit. He's also a gold paladin. Yes. Moving on to our grade twos, we've got four copies of. Uh, favorite pupil of light and dark Lou. So this thing has been great since set six, since the card came out. What this does is at the end of the battle that this is boosted by Bar uh, Blaster Friend Barkle or Floral Paladin Flogel, uh, well, when he's boosted he gets 3k, so if you have Barkle boosting he has a 19k beater. Also this isn't GB1 mind you, so you can do all this early game. Uh, at the end of the battle, move to soul, search your deck for a grade two card with Blaster and call it, and the called card gets 3k. So you can search your deck, call Blaster Blade, and give it 3k, and it's a 12k poke. And if you have Flogel, it restands for well, if whatever, if you give it triggers or something. Rush. Rush. And deck thinning. Deck thinning is great. Um, next up for our grade twos, we've got um, Deck Filter, the card. So uh, Star Hope Trumpeter, what it does is GB1, when it's called from hand, not deck because deck would be broken. Um, if you have an Alfred or Blaster Vanguard, you search your deck for any card you want and call it, and it gets 3k. So that's great. So call anything you want and give it power. Whoa. 
So we ran three copies of that. Last card for grade twos, Galatine. Now, before you leave this video and say I'm stupid, take note that this card, uh, take note that there are cards in this deck that let you search for whatever card you want. So treat this as a tech of uh, that in case time you need that uh, 41k shield when you're guarding with a uh, Marin G guard, you know, why not? And also since like whatever ends up in your damage zone, who cares? And you draw into it, who cares? It's a 10k shield in your hand that you can use later game. If most of the stuff that you're gonna call is you're gonna call from your deck anyway, so who cares? Also, you're running four of, of every of the important card of this deck, so you're good. Now we're on to great ones. We run four copies of Blaster Friend Barkle because Blaster Friend Barkle is good. What this does is when you call Blaster Blade uh, in the same column as him and you have a Blaster Vanguard, you unflip one. And when you boost uh, Lou, you give Lou a skill. That's cool. Um, next up for grade ones, we're running four copies of uh, the Lien PG because Lien PG is free. And uh, what she does is basically, if, um, the next time your grade three unit with Blaster or Alfred and is being attacked, uh, you Soul Blast one and you stop it. Yeah, it's just a Soul Blast. You don't have to discard. It's you just keep hand. And uh, yes, this card can work if you're protecting a grade three rear guard, but it's so rare that it doesn't matter. So keep in mind, you cannot. You typically use this PG early game unless you ride to grade three first. So if you have this PG in your hand, you're stuck on grade two, you can't use it. But this PG is so good in the long run that running four of it is more important. Next up, this is a stride deck. We're in stride era, folks. We need to stride. Um, we don't run alt miles, so the alt miles skill is pointless. When we stride, we this becomes a grade three for stride fodder. I only run three, not four, because uh, two reasons. Three is enough, honestly. You see your grade ones to the point where um, you don't really feel like you're you're not seeing them in your hand enough to call. I mean, 13 grade ones is enough to for ride chain alone for the consistency, so the rest of the deck functions perfectly fine. Um, the other reason I don't have a fourth copy is Miles had one, but uh, he didn't give it to me. He gave it to some random he met at locals because, um, yeah, fuck you, Miles. Um, even if, also, just as note, even if I had four copies, I'd still run this at three because I need room in the grade two slot for uh, for other stuff. So because of that, we're only running two copies of uh, Swordsman of Light, Blaster Rapier, Laura. The only reason we're running Laura is because she has lost her name. That's basically it. Um, she's your ride target, I would say, for the most part, because she's a vanilla. And like the only thing thing that resists matters against, I would say, is Blade Master. Because, like, if you keep this behind your Vanguard, they really have no way to touch it unless they're, like, playing Overlord, I guess, and they use Defeat Flare. Um, yeah. So, this blast, this Blaster Rapier of Laura is helpful because it does help you fix your hand if you are grade locked and you do ride her. And you can use a Wingo Brave skill. It's probably going to hit. Your opponent's really dumb if they're just going to guard all your Brave attacks over and over and over again. It's just straight up honesty. So this helps fix grade lock when you boost with Wingle. And the resist is nice because you put it behind your Vanguard, your opponent has to make an extra discard when they go into Ziegenberg, guaranteed. So, and resist is also not bad to have against like Link Joker, I guess. This deck gets really shat on by Link Joker, I assume, sometimes. But uh, yeah, it's it's there. I would say run it. It's it's a good card to run. Um, let's go into our triggers next because uh, triggers are broken. Sorry, I'm trying to get them all together here. All right, got four copies of Floral Pout and Flogo. You all should know what this does. It makes Blaster Blade restand and again for another attack. And if the Blaster Blade you restand has a crit or triggers on it, it gives this deck combo attacks. And it goes back in the deck, so more crits for later game. And it's not GB1, so uh, yeah, you could use this early game. Why not, right guys? It's amazing. Um, I like triggers with skills. Do you like triggers with skills? I love triggers with skills, especially since I don't have to run vanilla crits anymore. I like crits that just basically have Margul's skill, like especially when I can just also have Margul in my deck. 
So yeah, also moving stuff to soul and giving things like Blaster Blade 3K is nice for a really late push game. And it's a high beast, which is important. That's actually important in this deck. Next up, we run four copies of Margol, which is basically a Rongol, the card I just showed before, but it's a draw trigger. I don't run 12 crit in this deck. Why? Because I like to have fun and not win by sacking triggers. So yeah, it's eight crit, four draw. And sometimes it comes in handy, not gonna lie. Speaking of triggers with skills, as before, four copies of Maskell. So when I guard with the G guard Maskell, what's his name? Uh, Holy Beast Divine Maskell. Uh, if I G guard, use this to pay the cost. I discard a green one or less from hand. If I do, I get to draw a card. So more pluses, why not? It's better than running a vanilla, right? All right, we got over the main deck. Now into the most important card in this whole deck, not because of its skill, but because of the name, Gansel Daddy. So we're running two copies of Holy Divine Knight, Gancelot Peace Saver. Uh, Gancelot Peace Saver's skill is when he attacks, you get a counter charge. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, because why not? Let's just have the cost be give you resource. This gets an extra drive check, and if you have a face of card in G-Zone, it gets a crit. Why not? And then at the end of the battle, or not the end of the battle, but the end of your turn when it goes back in your G-Zone, all your blaster blades just continuously have resist during your turn. That's just fantastic overall. So yeah, let's just have that in our lives for the rest of our lives. Next up, uh, we're going to run four copies of Alfred Holy Saver because Alfred Holy Saver get, lets you get off uh, five drive checks, and that's really good. So it's GB2, flip a copy of itself over, choose a rear guard with blaster blade well but you're always gonna have a blaster heart so the whole blaster alfred heart thing i'm just gonna overlook all of that um choose a rear guard blaster blade in its name and give it twin drive and 3k that's just really good especially since we have cards in our deck that recycle their own that you just recycle triggers it's just a really good card in this deck so yes run four because you get four in the legend deck um for good cards to run i would suggest Aerial Divine Knight Alt Mile is a good like tech into the G zone because he lets you search for any grade two for for the simple cost of flip himself. Um, he gives your front row three k and he gives the target grade two that you call five k. So if you're in situations where you feel you don't need a saver to stride into, you just need a grade two to start doing your plays and that th you just see a good combo you can do with Alt Mile, which there are sometimes. Alt Mile is a good card to have. It's just good. All right, next up, we're running fucking Garmore. It's, it's happening. Fuck Myriad Soul Saver. So what this card does is a uh, numero uno. It's a gold paladin, so it's inherently better than the rest of the G zone. Uh, number two, uh, his GB two puts cards back into your deck. So what happens is, let's say you're uh, you're a beloved uh, Blaster Blade somehow ends up like in your like all four copies somehow end up in your drop zone and you're like what do i do all four in my drop zone we well, take one of these use its gb2 to the cost being pick a card from your drop and you put it back into your deck the bottom of your deck afterwards you look at the top six cards and for each of the cards that are high beasts revealed you have a card on your field 4k a different unit for each different high beast if you revealed four high beasts your garmore gains a crit and uh wouldn't you know it, it appears that all of our triggers are high beasts. So uh, getting the crit is not impossible, but uh, the goal isn't to get the crit. The goal is recycle. So yes, I will for sure put Garmor not just because optimalism, but because it's fucking Garmor. What other reason do I need? We're running... GB8 Avalon, because Avalon's a good card. This is Game Ender like all the other GB8s. What this does is when this attacks, you uh, counter plus one, search your deck for five cards. Just, yeah, why not? Let's just build a rebuild a field. And each of the cards called get 4K, and he gets crit. So you do your attacks, if they're multi-attacks maybe, attack, 
Then call out cards from your deck that aren't triggers. Maybe you call Flogal just to restand that Blaster Blade you got. And then gain a crit. And then do drive check a bunch of triggers because you just took out a bunch of non triggers out of your deck. So why not? We do run Sabreeze because Sabreeze is uh, good to punish people. So if your opponent tries a grade 2 stall, you just counter blast 2, discard stride into this, and then drive checks. And then because you have Bark Goal, you can get unflipped back and stuff. So it's, yeah, punish your opponent. And also at the end of it, when this goes back in your G zone and your opponent decides to stride, you just stride in against a lot maybe in the next turn. Or Alfred, because you got GB2 active, and then you can use Gancelot's skill to gain that crit and apply more pressure. So yes, I would suggest running Sibiris. G Guardians. Let's just start okay, let's keep going here. Um, Marin skill. You uh, When you G Guard, Alfred, Blaster, Vanguard, yada, yada, yada. So less one, search your deck for a card grade one or greater and call it to guard and gets plus 5k your target for this card will always be galatine if possible because it makes a uh, 30 30,000 point shield for a 41,000 defense yeah it's like the same like basically i treat this as like oh i need to be at slamy flare numbers right now 41 defense uh and like yeah so because the only way that this deck can achieve 41 shield and g guards is because is with this these two together um the galatine never really feels cluttered in my deck ever or in my hand or at all and also it's galatine why not man you know you got you got marin galatine blaster blade the, the gang's all back together you know why not shit um running one copy of assault because uh you know counter blast one place in guard uh free two rear guards gain 5k shield so that's also nice uh for emergencies when you have like a whole big when you like have a big field and you need like that really huge number most of the time your opponent's going to be killing your field for the most part a lot of decks have retiring now which kind of sucks so this card's kind of dead half of the time uh but hey you never know you might have that one game where you have a full field and you're just like hey i'm just gonna gain 25 shield thanks um but other than that this card is mostly like dead uh, it's it's kind of sad honestly Still a good card, still gonna run it. You know, your G zone's kinda techy in a way, so might as well. Uh so here's what happened. Uh I have one Divine Knight Mask goal. The reason I only have one is because the other one's coming in the mail. And I wanted to at least get this deck, show you guys this for now. Um so for the substitute, when I get the other mask goal, this is gonna go away. But for now I have um Laser Guard Dragon. Uh, I'm going to say the two mask goals is not too important because usually you'll use one during the game and then use like Isolt or like Marin like the rest like for the you can use Marin as your other G guard and then after that you might be a GBA and you'll win the game so the one mask goal works fine the reason I'm going to get rid of it for laser guards because they kind of do the exact same thing but mask goal just gets an extra shield laser guard needs a grade 2 to get 5k this needs a grade two to gain 10k. They have the same cost, so to speak. So this is just a stricter upgrade of this. So I'm just gonna ditch it when I get my second copy. It's coming in the mail, I just don't know when. Last but not least, you need Dismal because sometimes Blaster Blade's really important, you gotta keep it. Sometimes Barco's really important, you gotta keep it, etc. cetera. Um, Dismal's really a good card to have in this deck to protect your board. Also, since uh, VMAX exists and Vanguisher is relevant now, uh, this might come in handy against that kind of game. Uh, that was the whole deck. So, uh, yeah, it was um, pretty okay, I guess. This I love the deck, honestly. It's super consistent. The deck really works really amazingly. The consistency in the ride chain, the consistency in the calls, the amount of trigger checking you get with this deck is just phenomenal. And I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys enjoy playing more meta decks like this. This deck was kind of, ex not, not kind of, this deck was straight up expensive to build. So don't feel pressured to like play against super expensive decks like this. But this is pretty, a pretty optimal and ideal build for this deck. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. And this is Richard and I'll see you guys next time.